Hello, everybody, and welcome to the roster reveal that will be on display for Season 9 of the Universal Orlando Cup Series, taking place in 2021. Uh, time and date to be determined as of right now, but this will be early, uh, probably around maybe February, we'll see. But um, maybe June, or not June, I'm sorry, January. So maybe late January, early February, we could probably see the season come around. But in the meantime, let's just show the roster. All 42 drivers that you see on this list here are complete. I'll showcase the driver, main thing that goes around, and their sponsors and teams, you know, all that stuff. All right, let's get on down to it. Trent Dunham, which is main sponsor, is PlayStation 5. He has aboard Sega and Crash Bandicoot with his number one team. Now he moves over from Seg Keith Motorsports to Tweenix Racing, as Seg Keith has folded after last season. And we shall see what happens all together for, you know, Tweenix Racing, as uh, they have continuing uh, two other drivers, which we'll mention in a bit. Dylan Thoreau in the four, keeping the team spirit of Daytona. He brings along National Guard. And Mobile One, originally they had funding from Sidekeep Motorsports as well as another driver. But of course, now they're going to their own single car teams. So we'll see what happens to Thoreau. He had two wins last season. Uh, Dunham had one win last season. So uh, we'll see what happens to Thoreau uh, when we take the green flag for Season 9. He will definitely be one to watch in his second year in Cup. Zach Rogers, keeping the same sponsors he had last season, which is MSI. Uh, Monster Energy Ultra Paradise. And uh, let's see here. Uh, he's got a corn throwback car, and he may have one more to be announced, maybe. We'll see. But Zach Rogers for Bulldog Motorsport single car Dodge team. The good news for him, he is not the only Dodge that's in this field. So we'll discuss the other Dodges in a bit. Zachary Fitzwater, his main, his, this is his secondary scheme, which is Menards. And I'm just going to quickly uh, go away from the active roster and show his main right now. So I'm just going to go right here, which is this. This uh, should be fixed there. But uh, Tax Slayer is his main sponsorship for the seven. And uh, look forward to see what Fitzwater can do. Hopefully, uh, with two sponsors, it could change a lot for the team. For Evans Gardner, he definitely had a disaster of a season, despite making the chase and really not having a whole lot and uh, getting cucked at uh, Pensacola. Yep, Vietnam flashbacks for him. Speaking of drivers, um, how about we have four returns all together, and two of them are on one team. One of them right now is Nathan Hudson, who took last season off as a bit of a breather. Try to get his mindset back, and here he is with Flickinger Racing in the number eight car. He has aboard McDonald's, Exalta, uh, Mobile One, and Mario Kart 8. So there's going to be Mario Kart 8 sponsorship on the 8 car altogether. So looking forward to see what Hudson can do in his return to the Cup Series. His last run, like I mentioned, Season 7. And his last win was over in Iowa, which was race number 7. So eyes will definitely be on the 8 team to see if they can shake off the rust. Cole Deaver in the 9. He is back in the Cup Series after spending two seasons in Xfinity. And his last start in the Cup Series was back in Season 5. Actually, yeah. No, Season 6. Season 6. It was one of those two. I want to say 6. But he drove the 83 Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet. And now here he is in the number 9 for Evans Gardner Motorsports. Driving aboard Napa. Napa Auto Parts, uh, Napa Unites, Mountain Dew, and Hooters. So it should be interesting to see what Deaver can do in this number nine team. Jessica Sheldon in the 0-2 with Hershey's Cookies and Cream, having alongside with Coca-Cola as their associate sponsor with the team. Uh, Coca-Cola Thunder is also aboard the 0-2, and then Konachan is, is the other sponsor aboard. I hope I pronounced it correctly. I'm going to have a hard time butchering, too. I hope not. Rip me in the comments if I did, Charles and Jess. <laughs> James Ellison is in the 0-3 for this season. Uh, he'll be taking over Charles Sanford's ride. And this is one of three rookies that will be battling out for Rookie of the Year. He's bringing alongside his main sponsor, Stouffer's, and that'll be the scheme he'll be using throughout the entirety of the season. 
But we'll see what happens to Ellison because I know he will be a fan favorite to watch alongside we take that green flag. John Art in the 05. Now, I know this is Meyer Racing Toyota, but there's been no word whether or not uh, what the satellite team is for John Art. Uh, there's been no word from Meyer. They'll make that announcement hopefully soon. But Zaxby's their main sponsor altogether, just like last season. Just main differences, not with Meyer Racing Toyota, but the satellite of the team. So we'll see what happens. One driver definitely keep an eye on for this upcoming season. Seth Cole in the Asin Chevrolet there. He is going to be a interesting driver to watch who won the 500 last season won two races early on made the chase made it to about chase race number nine with the points lead lost it and then the finale came they just couldn't seem to finish the job so he is definitely going to be one to keep an eye on next season hopefully he can get the job done and finally get a championship so we'll see what happens with Seth if he can finally get that championship he's been long waiting for in the Intercell Universe Orlando Cup Series. Kyle Matthews in the 09, keeping his sponsors for S3 Motorsports, Melly Yellow Kings Island, and Hooters. Um, definitely not been a season to remember for Car 09. No wins altogether. His last win was last season, the Budweiser Shootout, last points paying win. Um, that has been a long time for Kyle. It's been quite some time. Uh, it's been at least a couple seasons, so hopefully Kyle can break the winless streak for S3 Motorsports and now uh, can get out of the hole there. Ramia Fisher for Full Throttle Motorsports. Should be really interesting to see. They got a brand new look going on for uh, Credit One Bank. And then the 46 has a new look for um, uh, their sponsors as well. Uh, bring along also Mountain Dew Kickstart and Dex Imaging. So Ramia Fisher definitely going to be uh, an interesting topic to keep an eye on because uh, his return to Cup definitely did not go out really, really good. So hopefully get the job done and at least get a win. We'll see what happens to that 11 team. Hopefully they get the uh, job done. We take the green at Daytona for the 500 there. Alex Drayton is definitely another driver who's wanting some redeeming factors last season. Uh, second year driver in the 14. First season with Phoenix Racing, and it did not go well for him at all. And the Jamba Juice Chevrolet looking for redeeming factors heading into uh, season nine. Uh, he had four, uh, three wins uh, the season prior. And nothing this last season there, so he would be one to keep an eye on. Hopefully uh, he can get a win at some tracks that he knows very well at, yeah, especially at Auto Club, so one to keep an eye on is Alex Straten for sure. Phil Parker made the chase last season, took a win uh, over at, not Twin Ring, uh, it was one of the international races it was. It wasn't Ireland, I can't remember. I think it was Dubai. Yes, it was Dubai. Or no, it wasn't Dubai, it was... Um, Sean's Lose, I think it was. Anyways, though, Phil Parker returning to the 15, keeping cheers aboard for his number 15 machine. He made the chase last season and didn't do too well. So uh, one positive is that at least he did the best of his career run altogether. He's a back-to-back -back chaser. Trying to see if he can go three in a row and making the chase there for my racing Toyota. Sky Commons in the Bass Pro Shop 17 there, now a part of Dodge. Now, Flickinger Racing was a part of Chevrolet, and same with Sky Commons. And now they have both been over to Dodge, as Flickinger Racing actually has a little bit of funding over with Sky Commons for Sin City Motorsports there. So, let me just do this real quick before I forget. Actually, it's Sin City Racing. I thought I had that on there, but I guess I didn't, so my apologies. See, kids, make sure you check everything, no matter what. But Sky Commons uh, didn't really have much of a season there in that Bass Pro Shops Dodge. Looking for something to happen there in that machine, and uh, hopefully a win would be nice for Sky. It's been a while since his win. His last win was over back at Indianapolis when he drove the 24 car in his last season that he was in it. So, fingers crossed if we can get the job done there. JT Bryant, the 22, is going to have a brand new look altogether who went from Joey Logano, Shell, Pennzoil Ford, to now Denny Hamlin, FedEx, Toyota for Mythical Racing. A new era is upon JT Bryan, and hopefully he can get the job done. He has FedEx Express, FedEx Freight, and FedEx Ground aboard that 22 machine, and uh, hopefully he can get the job done and continue that winning success. He did get one win last season, so there was actually, what, three drivers that got two wins. Actually, um... Yeah, three drivers, so hard enough to believe. Everyone else was a one-time winner for whoever did, so 
Bryant definitely going to be a fan favorite, and this uh, this change may be a risky move for that 22 team, but we shall see. Hopefully, he'll prove some people wrong, especially a lot of doubters for sure. Clint Spillman for Clint 8813 Racing, keeping the same scheme he had for now the third season in the 24 team. Last season, he made the chase, had some redeeming factors with some great consistency. However, no wins for that 24 team yet. Clint right now is all-time active in the wins list. And uh, I just want to double check this real quick that I have on my files here. And right now, actually, him and Cody Lamas are tied for the most wins altogether. The next one behind is Dylan Pochi, which we'll talk about in a bit. So, Clint Spillman, he really would like a win to break out of that area. Cody Lamas, he got a win last season at Homestead. So, we'll see what happens for Clint. Looking for any redeemable factors altogether. Joshua Osborne, that Castrol GTX Chevrolet, who didn't get a win last season, had a good season towards about the first half of the regular season, and second half kind of had an up and down slope, was in the top 10 coming into Thornton, and of course had that one bad run, knocked him out of the playoffs, and uh, obviously that devastated Osborne, just couldn't recover altogether. But Johanna Atwood Motorsports, having Castrol GTX as their main sponsor altogether for Osborne, and uh, he will definitely be the guy to keep it on because I know his teammate has probably been really happy about last season. We'll talk more about him in a bit. Joshua Osborne, folks. Castro GTX. Dylan Pote keeping his uh, great clip scheme as well as Ellis tractors and state water heaters for Twinix Racing. Try to do this real quick. But Dylan Pote in the 31, the captain of the team. Definitely... Uh, didn't really get a whole lot done for that 31 team. Another um, very weird season there. He managed to win the All-Star race last season. And I'm going to double check this on the documents here. I am pretty certain that he did get a win. No, he didn't. It was just the All-Star race. That... Oh, no, he did get a win. It was over at Texas. That's right, because he got that pass off Noah Hart. So with his win, he now jumps up another spot in the standings for all-time wins. Trying to get the job done, hunt down Cody Lamas and Clint Spillman. Aaron Douglas being a part of My Racing Toyota, which is actually the fourth driver. Bringing aboard Loves Toyota. And he had a great Xfinity campaign, just like James Ellison did, forgot to mention. Both drivers got two wins in the respective season that they were in for Outback Xfinity. Um, Ellison, I'm just going to quickly mention, uh, he won at Twin Ring, Motegi, and Open Rose. Aaron Douglas managed to win at Atlanta and the All-Star Race, as well as, I could have sworn he won another race there. No, I guess not. Okay, I thought he won too. My bad. But, uh, Aaron Douglas, he got a win this season. This or last season. What am I saying this season? Last season there, and uh, he definitely will be one to keep an eye on there. Meyer decided to give him the call up, and here he is in the 36, just like kind of like with Phil Parker's situation. So hopefully he can get the job done for the team. Again, uh, the second of three rookies battling out for rookie of the year. There's one more you can see in the list, but we'll talk about him in a bit. Keith Batts in the 39. You see that his main scheme that he's had for the past, oh man, I want to say, uh, let's see, we're in season nine. He's had since season three, even with the various changes, and now he has retired the POW MIA look, and now having aboard Nathan's Hot Dogs Coca-Cola as his main primary. He also has Motorcraft aboard in his 39 car, and Batson definitely uh, had his best career run altogether. Made the chase, uh, second worst though altogether. Actually, uh, yeah, second worst, which definitely was not good for the 39 team. I mean, one positive is he made the chase. However, the other fact is that Batson had two chances to win, trying to get that elusive win, had a chance at Michigan, lost in the last lap off of turn three to James Qualls, and had a chance to win Thornton, and probably one of the craziest last laps I've ever seen in my life, especially at Thornton, and that'll be one to remember. But Batson looking for redeeming factors, trying to see if he can make another chase, so that's at least been one positive about his uh, resume last season. Also, very nice scheme, too. He did the fire suit. 
Now, this will definitely be the weirdest thing to see all together. Ainge Navarro is in the number 42 for Z-Line Designs. If you remember correctly, that 42 has been a part of Chevrolet ever since the beginning of the Universal Orlando Cup Series when before Kyle Keith came around, like Stephen Pollard III and Justin Talapas came aboard. Then Kyle Keith took over in Season 3 through Season 8. And now Season 9 to 42 will be a part of Angel Navarro's return. She will have Z-Line designs and a lot of um, a lot of Kyle Busch-like type of schemes, if you really think about it there. I'm just going to put it up here real quickly there. Uh, Navarro has Z-Line, GameStop, Old Spice, Rudy's Barbecue, and Mikusk. So, Archangel Racing, they have... Uh, rebranded the, oh Jesus, I'm going to say it was the 20, yes, it was the 20, and this goes from there to the 42, so she will be one to keep an eye on all together on her return to the Cup Series, this is another one of those drivers making the return, as well as a few others you're going to see on this list, just like Nathan Hudson before, Audrey Baranowskis in the 46 for Full Throttle Motorsports, Having Delta and Atlanta FC return to sponsorship as well as bringing along errands. Baranowskis got her first career cup win over at Mossport. It was a big deal for Brock and the crew. And it was probably one of the best moments they had all together. That was their only team win they had throughout the entirety of the season. And Baranowskis really didn't have much going after that. So at least the positive is they got the first team win all together. Now they just got to get their act together and find out in their second season altogether how they're going to get done there. Remember, this used to be Nathan Hudson's team with um, the 11-46 now changed over to a different look. Cody Lamas in the 48, bringing along uh, Lowe's and Ally. Uh, Lowe's finally has returned the yellow scheme as well as a few other Lowe's schemes as well. Ally's back as well. There's nothing else to talk about. The only uh, driver for Hendrick Motorsports for right now. So we'll see what happens to Cody. Who knows? Maybe he may talk to another driver to, to uh, make a merger. We'll see. Connor Meyer here in the Seagate GameStop Toyota for Meyer Racing Toyota. The captain has decided to change a new look on his number 51. And his Sense 4K TV will not be used next this uh, upcoming season. So it's just this scheme that he'll run throughout the majority of the season as well as possible throwbacks. And who else would happens along the way for the theme race. So Meyer made the chase last season after getting a win. And he definitely had his best run altogether. He has finally emerged himself. Hopefully, he can get more than just one win and try to go after a championship along the way, too. And just below him, the last of the Meyer Racing Toyota crew, Brett Pritchard, keeping the 54 Bang Toyota. Pritchard did not have a good season altogether. Got involved in that tornado death crash over in Orlando and just couldn't seem to do anything else there. Just been involved in a lot of wrecks. And, uh, boy, I don't know what to say about Brett Pritchard. Hopefully, he can get the job done. He can at least get something done in his cup resume because it has not been looking pretty. Throughout all together in the inner cell. Diego Yepes in the number 59 Husky Mercedes, who grabbed Mercedes' first victory back at Sebring. Mercedes managed to pick up two wins all together, one through Yepes and one from another driver, which we'll mention. Now I, I think you notice very carefully, this is a this is the regular Husky scheme that'll be used because there is a throwback one that will be used all together. It has a little bit of a different design. So just wanted to throw that out there. But Diego Yepes. He made the chase last season and got a win, so he, I'm glad he made me eat shit. Thank you. Scott Roush is another driver making his return to the Cup Series altogether in an NRSL competition. Bringing along Roush, Roush themed sponsorship for Fingai Pastrami, adding on to the team. They got Roush Performance, Roush Yates Engines, and Castro aboard their number 60. So Roush's last win came back at dc two seasons ago so that was race number 24 when that happened so it's gonna be great to see scott roush come back if you notice he was a part of the all-star showdown uh last season and didn't make it into the main event but it was good to see his name out there and uh really show a big surprise right there Benjamin Miles in the number 62 moving from Sidekeep keep motorsports that shut down to devin becker incorporated they got a two-car team aboard with the 62, which is a brand new number used altogether. This is actually one of four new numbers altogether that is being used. And I've also gotten word that is that there's another number making a return to the Cup Series altogether, which we'll talk about in a bit. But Benjamin Miles will have aboard Hertz and AutoZone. That is their main sponsors altogether for the team. 
Well, Chicagoland didn't have much of a season after that, so Miles is looking for redeemable factors. And Sam at Oscon making his cup debut altogether, I believe. Now, the keyword believe, well, you had to double check on Sam, and he'll be making his Intercell Grand debut altogether. Skipping the Xfinity Series, they're trying to do a Alex Drayton route there in the 63 car. So hopefully Oscon can at least um, get something done. Is the Swedish representative there? Hopefully he'll get the job done. Devin had his eyes on him the whole time. And this is uh, the 36 rebranded to the 63 for the team. Speaking of new numbers, the 66 will make its debut. And it'll be none other than Allison Rain. You're probably wondering for those brand new and missed out on, on the preseason session number one. Allison Rain is formerly known as Johnny Garter. And now she is known as Allison Rain. So uh, Allison, for the time being, as of doing this um, recording of the video... She has state water heaters and Crowley food sets aboard the 66. There may be some possible new sponsorship for the upcoming season. I'm not sure as of right now, but just saying this is the, the two that she's got all together. And she's got three that she'll be running throughout the season. Again, also the 66 making its cup debut this upcoming season. And the other new uh, number is 68, which is going to be driven by Kev Shear. Bringing along Sheets as his main sponsor. Guarantee the Wawa versus Sheets race is going to be fun and lit. For Evans Gardner Motorsports, the last of the Evans Gardner, or, uh, the second to last driver of the Evans Gardner camp that's there. But Kev Shear moving over from the double zero who won in open roads and now the 68. So we'll see if the move works out for Evans Gardner Motorsports. I swear they're playing three dimensional chess with me. So hopefully it gets the job done and could pull a win out of their ass for Kev because uh, ever since his return, Beside, beside that one win there, it's not been much for Kev, so hopefully he can get some, but then redeemable there. And there is the champion from last season, James Qualls, who I gotta say has got to be extremely happy with everything that transpired on that team. And I gotta say, after everything that happened last season, I guarantee he's going to be happy. So who knows what's going to happen this season. I think he's going to have his sights set on the 500, just like a few other people that are on this list that are in a must really want to win this race badly situation. Qualls definitely is going to be one of the heavy favorites altogether. And hopefully he can get the job done. We shall see what happens for Qualls. And he did get one win at Michigan and was extremely consistent. The chase run, very memorable. Pulled the 2016 Cubs out of his you-know-where. Ember Ross moving, up, moving over some new sponsorship in the 77. Who keeps her schemes. So we shall see what happens. Bringing uh, Tim Fiegel sponsorship that was from the 95 team. Uh, the 77 has JBL, Sirius XM, DLP, and Roke Mobile. So should be interesting to see what Ember Ross can do in her fourth season in Cup. I believe this is. It's either her third or fourth, but we'll see what happens. Jesse Turner in the 78, bring aboard Aflac for his main sponsor of the 78 crew for Mercedes. Got Mercedes' second win altogether over at Zenjoltis Mega Super Speedway. And I'll tell you what, Jesse Turner really proved the doubters wrong, finally getting that cup win and enter cell victory. It took a while, but finally got it done. Now we'll see what happens with Turner as now he's in his second season of cup. They're all, all together for enter cell competition, so... Um, Turner has aboard uh, Aflac, Big Time, Haas, and PPG Paint. And then, fun fact, PPG Paint uh, was last used by Allison Rain when driving the number 12 at the time. So, great to see that sponsor coming back in the Cup Series altogether. I think that was Season 6, too, if my memory serves you correctly. Is that or 7? Uh, Alex Ronti keeping his sponsors and schemes from the 84 from last season, mainly Ally. And then his throwback, which is the uh, Nuclear Blast Records. So, Ferranti really didn't have a good season altogether. His first bad season in the Intercell competition. So, hopefully, he can at least get something done in the Chevrolet in Season 9. Hopefully, uh, a win or two could really help and boost some, this team's confidence there altogether. Quint Moore in the 89, bringing back Racing with Jesus and the Blue Scheme there and other schemes altogether. Uh, we'll see what happens to Quint Moore. Hopefully, uh, you know, that one... One season made the chase is not just all she wrote there, but um, definitely did not have a good season altogether in the A9 team. Just didn't have any luck at all. So hopefully he can get something done. We'll see. 
Jeffrey Finn guy in the 92. Some new looks there for the Finn guy pastrami camp there. Bringing aboard Nintendo, Jack Daniels, Amico, and Warner Media. So, really interesting to see what's going to happen for Jeffrey Finn guy in that 92 camp. And uh, hopefully, uh, he can at least get a win. He went winless last season, which is actually um, very shocking. I think he went winless. I'm going to double check that right now because I'm pretty certain he did not win a race. Actually, nope, he did win. That was over at Ireland. My bad. I thought he didn't win. I guess my memory has gone to crap. But uh, Jeffrey Finn guy in his... Oh, man, I want to say this is his fourth or fifth season in Cup, and especially in the 92, so... Actually, no, I think this is his third. Something. I don't remember. It's getting to be, at, be that point there. But Finn guy uh, trying to do what he can to hunt down some of these guys that... Uh, Really been beating him in the standings lately and uh, try to see if he could win more than one race. And look who's back, folks. Brian James, who made his last cup start back in season two. Archangel Racing will give him the call of an opportunity there to drive the 94 Weckman's Genesee Beer Toyota for the team. This was the 95 rebranded to the 94. This will be the main scheme they'll drive throughout the majority of the season unless uh, they randomly get a new sponsorship or... Um, you know, with throwbacks and all that stuff too. But Brian James, going to be a fan favorite to watch all together. Hopefully this is where no one gets rolled in the process. Brian James, um, when he last drove in the inner cell, driving the Xfinity Series in Season 8, uh, didn't have much going on there. So hopefully he can get some job done. Normally the drivers in Archangel Racing do get a, a win there. So hopefully Brian can find a way to get that elusive victory. Zach Flickinger is the last of the drivers making his inner cell return. He decided to get out of the team on a roll just like Navarro, and he's back in his car driving the 96 again, so it's good to see some familiar looks all together. Uh, hopefully Flickinger can at least get the job done in the Brant Dodge. Uh, also to double check on Flickinger's sponsorship, uh, he has a board Exalta, Brant, and Target in his main scheme, so we'll see what happens to Flickinger. Hopefully... Um, Gets a really good season all together and also bows out for the 500. RJ Bishop in the 98 has managed to have probably one of the worst seasons ever in his, uh, let's see, I want to see this is his fourth season in Cup. Second now at Mercedes. And uh, he was the only driver for the team to not win a race. So he's going to be the one to watch for sure for the team. Hopefully to get some redeemable factors going around. Uh, RJ has gear wrench, Haas, Kroger checklist, or, or uh, Kroger clicklist, excuse me, I can't read for whatever reason. Uh, Mountain Dew, Baja Blast, and uh, that is it for the 98 crew. So we'll see what happens to RJ. Once again, trying to not be another slump. And last but not least, Levi McIntyre in the sick go forward there. McIntyre uh, just barely missed out on the chase and still had a pretty solid season, but... Um, McIntyre's going to probably be the one to keep an eye on all together. He is just trying to do what he can to um, get something done and hopefully um, try to change the momentum he's been having lately there and hopefully get a win too. So we'll see what happens. Alrighty, guys, there is your look at your full roster going on by. The Xfinity one will probably be coming very soon. And like I said, happy Thanksgiving to everyone who's been watching. Until then, this is your boy DeYoung signing off. We will see you guys for more Spectrum Cup Series action on the channel, uh, the second and final preseason Thunder session, and then, of course, when Daytona Speed Weeks will come on by. Until then, goodbye, everybody, and I'll see you guys later.